The Cincinnati Bengals, for the first time since the 1980s, will be advancing to the AFC Championship to take on the Kansas City Chiefs, who make their fourth straight AFC Championship appearance. The Cincinnati Bengals, more than likely a lot of people have been saying they shouldn't be here, but Joe Burr and company have been proven that they have that swagger. They run the North for the Chiefs, thrilling overtime victory against the Buffalo Bills, and they are in this position. For the NFC Championship, the San Francisco 49ers will face the Los Angeles Rams in this NFC West battle. 3-0 could be the record that the 49ers have against the Los Angeles Rams as Debo Samuel was motioning the sweep 2-0 this season. For the Rams, they look like one of the best teams in the playoffs. However, the Achilles heel could be the San Francisco 49ers, who have been surprisingly doing great against some high-powered offenses, including the Cowboys, the Packers, and the Rams in Week 18. Some good games coming up this weekend, but what we want to talk about in this segment was ranking the teams, the four remaining teams, who's the worst team, who's the best team. We're going to start from number four going down to number one. Before I say who the worst team is, the second worst team, I'm not saying that these teams are bad. All these teams are deserving of making the postseason. However, given the amount of talent that's on each team, I just want to go ahead and say which teams have the most talent and have the best shot at making the Super Bowl, not discrediting any team at all. First, to start off with the team that I would say, very good team, coached really well. But as far as talent goes, I, I got to go with the San Francisco 49ers as the fourth best remaining team. And here's why. Let, let's look at the pros and the cons of all these teams. The pros, coaching. Oh, my goodness. The coaching has been excellent. And this doesn't stem from just last week's game against the Green Bay Packers, but wild card weekend against the Dallas Cowboys. Week 18 against the Los Angeles Rams. They have been coached really well by Kyle Shanahan, but the, the person that I'm most impressed with in the coaching staff is D'Amico Ryans, who is not as much talked about as a head coaching candidate as other candidates out there. I know, I know the Minnesota Vikings interviewed Ryans for a head coaching position, but Ryan should get more credit because of how great this defense has been against those high-powered offenses that, that we mentioned, against the Rams, the Cowboys, and the Packers. They have kept them alive in this postseason, and now they are advancing to the NFC Championship. So the coaching is a big pro. As well as the offensive line, it does not matter who's the running back at that point. You could have Jeff Wilson. You could have Elijah Mitchell. You could have Debo Samuel, and they will perform well. But speaking of Debo Samuel, that's another pro. Just him himself as a player. He's one of the best offensive players in the, in the league, and I'd be surprised if he's not a candidate, at least for Offensive Player of the Year, so those are the pros for the 49ers. Now, the cons for them, they're secondary. Their secondary is going to be, well, the secondary for all four of these teams need a lot of help. But the 49ers secondary, definitely, they, they need some help. We talked about D'Amico Ryans. Recently, he's been doing a great job. So the secondary has been stepping up, but it's still an Achilles heel for the 49ers. Uh, their pass game with Jimmy Garoppolo, it can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the other remaining teams. The Rams, the Chiefs. The Bengals, those teams are known for top five, top 10 passing games. For the 49ers, they don't really operate that way, which is okay. Like Jimmy Garoppolo can do what he needs to do to win the game. But if you get behind for any sort of reason and you need to come back, yes, you proved in a 17-point comeback against the Los Angeles Rams, but is that really feasible week in and week out? So that's the only thing that I'm really concerned about as far as the passing game goes for the 49ers. But ranking the teams, I would say out of all the remaining teams, the 49ers rank in at number four. Uh, moving on to number three, it's another away team in the uh, championship games. The Cincinnati Bengals, I would say, are number three. And this is kind of saying something because the Bengals are actually a really good team. For the Bengals, their pass game, the pros. The pros for the Bengals, their pass game, obviously. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, their offense in general, even the run game. With Joe Mixon, who's really stepped it up, and I would say has had the best season of his career thus far at 25 years old. Now, the cons of the Cincinnati Bengals, I thought we covered this already this season. I thought we fixed it up. Uh, but the offensive line, the offensive line needs some help. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm rooting for the Bengals' offensive line a lot because we actually did a documentary before he got drafted on Hakeem Adeniji. We had the opportunity to, get, to go uh, film him. 
to interview him. Uh, so you could go back on the channel and watch that documentary. Just type in Hakeem Adeniji, time to football. You'll find it. Uh, so I'm rooting for the offensive line. I'm rooting for my boy who worked his way up from a six-round pick all the way to a starting offensive lineman for the Cincinnati Bengals. Last week, however, the offensive line was not shambles, gave up nine sacks to the Tennessee Titans. The Titans' defense is ferocious in the pass rush. So maybe, hopefully, it was just that, fingers crossed. But all season long, the Bengals' offensive line has looked better, and it, it looked like Jamar Chase was the right choice instead of people saying, oh, well, you should draft an offensive lineman. No, Jamar Chase ended up being a great pick. Offensive line stepped it up themselves. They didn't need that much help as it is. But from last week, the offensive line was a con. Uh, and then the secondary. I'm going to mention that again. I, I think the defense in general gives up a lot of yards on the ground and through the air as well. But the secondary for the Cincinnati Bengals can give up a lot of yards through the air. Uh, moving on to number two, who is the second best team remaining in the postseason? This team could be number one. They really could. But I'm going to go ahead and place them at number two, and that is the Kansas City Chiefs. And here's why. The pros for them, the passing offense. Project Mahomes, we know how good Tyree Kill, how Travis Kelsey. Like, I was talking to someone yesterday about how, okay, well, you can't really play prevent defense against the Chiefs when they're coming back against the Buffalo Bills because we know that prevent defense doesn't really work in the NFL. But you can't really blitz Patrick Mahomes because he's going to either escape out of it and run with the football, as he showed against the Buffalo Bills, or you're going to leave Tyreek Hill, who's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, one-on-one, or Travis Kelsey, one-on-one, who's one of the big-bodied, best tight ends in the NFL. You can't do that. So it's really hard to stop this pass game, and that is a huge pro for the Kansas City Chiefs. That defense is a con for the Chiefs. They won't give up a lot of points usually, but they'll give up a lot of yards through the air, and especially some good teams against the Chargers all season long, against the Bills last week. When they, when the competition steps up, the Chiefs' defense tends to struggle. So with the competition getting stiff against the Bengals, against potentially the Rams or the 49ers that they face in the Super Bowl, it's going to be a con for the defense of the Kansas City Chiefs. And another con is the run game. I know that the run game has been looking good with Jarek McKinnon, with Clyde edwards helaire back. Uh, Darrell Williams has been out with a toe injury. But this run game isn't really known to be a threat on the ground. Like, it's good enough. Kind of like going back to the 49ers pass game. Like, it's good enough to get the job done. But when it really matters, when you really need them the most, can they really step up? And that's the same question that I have for the Chiefs and their run game. That's why I have the run game down as a con. So they're the second best team remaining. And then the last team that is remaining, the Los Angeles Rams. I personally believe that they are the best team remaining in the postseason at this point. The pros, the pass game, we know about them. The run game as in general as well. That's why I say the pro is the whole offense in general. It's probably the most well-rounded offense remaining in the postseason. You have a pass game with MVP candidate Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford. They have a connection. They can get it done. You have a run game. Hey, Daryl Henderson was looking good this season. Sony Michelle was looking good this season. And now Cam Akers, the last couple of games, has been looking pretty decent. It doesn't matter who really is behind that offensive line. They can get it done in the run game. So the whole offense in general, the most well-rounded offense remaining, and that's why I have the Rams ranked in as the number one best team. That is a huge pro, even though in the front four, in the trenches, they might be decent in the back, in the secondary. Eh, gives up some uh, big plays here and there. And now they lost Jordan Fuller. They bring in Eric Weddle. It still isn't enough. They've been giving up some big plays all season long in the secondary, and that could hurt them against some teams with high-powered offenses we talked about the Chiefs that could face in the Super Bowl, the Bengals that could face in the Super Bowl. Maybe this week against Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G has been known to throw for 300 yards against the LA Rams, so there's no guarantee to stop them. So that's a con that I would say, but I mean, honestly, that's probably the only con for the Los Angeles Rams. Other than that, I mean, I think they're, I, I hate to keep saying this, the most well-rounded team in the playoffs remaining. So to recap, the best teams remaining in the postseason, number one, LA Rams, two, Kansas City Chiefs, three, Cincinnati Bengals, and four, the San Francisco 49ers.
Leave your comments, leave your thoughts down below. Love to hear your opinions on who you think is the best teams remaining in the postseason.